what is the best time to do a studio tour? Well, probably when you're like super busy and everything is really, really messy. Hanging out in the studio with Rafi. Hola, you amazing artist, and welcome to the studio. It is super messy in here, and uh, Clee and I are both uh, working our butts off because we actually have a live uh, studio event going on on Friday. Friday, uh, shoot, what Friday is the it? The 4th. Friday the 4th. So Friday the 4th, we have a virtual open studio that we're doing on our website, and we have a whole bunch of things that we're giving away. So right now is actually probably not the best time to do a studio tour, but we're going to do it anyway because we don't have any other content for this week. So yeah. Okay, so let's let's uh, get started. One of the first things you guys are probably noticing right now is that the spinning easel is laying flat. And the reason is because I built this easel uh, to lay down and stand up. So that's what it that's what it does. So when I need uh, to lay something flat to work on it like that, that's that's what I do. You guys have heard the stories of me telling you that uh, I basically just built this stuff out of scraps, and this is like an old easel base and a lazy Susan, and these are pieces of wood that we had in the yard. And this box down here is a nice solid box that was uh, in the yard and I decided to use it for the inside of the easel and I put this drawer in there and it's on casters. So this thing rolls around and obviously this is what I take out when I do live events but I use it in here in the studio as well. Um, and it does take up a lot of room in the studio. Yeah, because our studio is not that big. As you can see, everything is just kind of thrown all over the place. There's Clee working on jewelry. Good day. Uh, pretty much what I do, the way that I organize things, is I have all my paints just separated by color. I've got all my paint mixtures, the stuff that I create, separated uh, just by bottle. It's just there. There's no separation. And then this is where I do my my prints, my um, styrofoam prints. And then I've got print stuff there, my glosses and stuff. I've got some acrylic cheap paint right here. I've got my pigment powders up there, my airbrush machine over there. I've got things in drawers. I'm not sure what's in there. Other paint here. This is supposed to be separated by color, but it's not. Here's the bins. This is where I have my print paper, uh, cardstock, regular paper, and basically just different supplies. Uh, I've got some of my art books up there. I have some art books right there that I was using for reference. There are two anatomy books. This, uh, this one I've actually had for years. Um, this one, somebody gave it to me when I was at the flea market. And it's actually pretty good. So over here I've got all my mediums that I use, Liqu Liquitex uh, slow blending gel and stuff like that. Got my Arteza paint. I mean, as you could see, because somebody had asked me uh, what kind of paint I use, um, I use everything. So yeah, uh, down here I've got uh, Elmer's glue for my prints. I've got self-leveling medium and then heavy gel medium right there. Under there is, there's tools and stuff back there and different things. I don't worry about that stuff. Then you're like, why did I put it where I can't get to it? I know. Then I know. you worry about it. I do. My brushes are up there. These are my stamps that I use for different stuff. I don't know where I found that. I think I found all those stamps at the flea market or something. And I've got this stuff. This is basically uh, the area for my print making stuff. More mediums. I always keep the sour cream jars because these are great for uh, mixing paint. And the cool thing about this is that when you're done mixing the paint, you could peel it out of there one-handed. <clears throat> one-handed it doesn't. So yeah, paint peels right off. This is where I got my willow charcoal. And obviously I use like just plastic bowls and stuff. These are like um, microwavable meal bowls. And I also use lids for my palettes. And I've got the lids down here. I've got spray paint right there. Uh, I've got drawing materials there. I've got extra pieces of canvas over here. 
And then down there is all my clay working stuff. That's my clay shelf. Uh, not right. to be confused with the clay shelf. Yeah, not to be... It's over in this area. Yeah, that's the clay shelf. Uh, we got a laminator. I've got soft, super soft strand. Hey, look. You can see other things. This is where I got my buckets down here. My tools are back there. I'm going to show you guys how the uh, spinning easel goes back into place. And usually what I do is stand it up. Tight these. Okay, so this base is really, really heavy. And the reason that I always tell you guys, if you're going to build your own spinning easel, to make sure that the base is heavy is so that the center of balance, uh, the, the bigger the painting is, it doesn't actually knock it down. Then what we do is go here. This is another easel that I built um, uh, with leftover easel parts. Like there's like an ancient easel on here and like new easels and just other easels that broke. And so I use this for like really tall pieces. And this comes up to here, so I also use this just a regular easel. But I, I built it, so it's cool. This is where I keep some of my big brushes. So like paint brushes and then rags go down there. When I'm painting or doing something, a lot of times I have this here. And that way I've got my supplies right next to me and I could use this table. When I'm not using it, this table slides out of the way because we don't have a lot of room. We try to maximize the amount of room that is in here as much as possible. And usually when all this stuff is put away, it uh, it just doesn't look, doesn't look as bad. Okay, on the other side of the studio, we've got a paint jar. Let's put this away. This is my drawing table. And basically what I did was I grabbed an old drawing table that somebody gave me and this mechanism, so it goes up and down. Uh, I pulled the drawer out and actually built this thing so I could keep uh, all my supplies down there and actually have more room underneath there. And then over here to the side, this is where I keep um, a lot of my, my paper stuff in uh, the suitcases. Suitcases, I don't know what they're called, portfolios. And then this down here is our music. Uh, station and stuff like when we record podcasts or when we do live stream, this is where all the sound comes from. This is the computer that we use when we do the live stream. And this is cool. Uh, I just built this. I built this jib for our camera so that when we do the live stream or especially the sale, I bought it for the sale. So when we do the sale this Friday, um, we'll be able to talk from here and also from anywhere in the studio and just position it. I'm a big fan of just building whatever it is that you need. So everything in the studio is pretty much built by me other than the chair that I'm sitting on. Okay. And then over here is where I usually sit. There's not usually a painting there, but there's just no room for anything. This is where I have the roller thing mounted so that uh, when I'm working on the print stuff over there, all those boxes up there have additional supplies that we use. There's my blender for when I use the plaster of Paris and I do sculpture stuff. The chicken. Ah! Yeah. Then over here, I've got like the camera shelf. That's where all the camera stuff is. This camera is the one that we use for when we do the, the YouTube videos. This is our, our thingy where it's like, Take one! And then batteries and different stuff like that there. This over here is my thunder drum. And then this is Klee's area. And Klee has the music where she keeps um, all of her music madness stuff. That's also Ooh. where goggles get born. Look at that. Those are nice. Those are some of the things I'm thinking about showing. And then we come over to Clee's area. Oh, wait, I'm not done. Okay, so we go over to my area. Rude. And this is where I keep uh, all the stuff. Basically, all the equipment for uh, stretching canvas, for uh, putting the hanging mounts and stuff like that. All of that is back there. Not very exciting. What do we got going on here? Um, kind of a mess. I've got some repairs and things and some things that I'm working on prototype. I like how Klee is like, this is a mess. And I'm like, nope, not <laughs> at all. They just toured my part of the studio. That 
That's a mess. So this is not actually a terrible mess. Mm. Um, but <laughs> this is where I work. This is where everything happens, right here. And I have my torches here and my soldering stuff. All my nifty pliers and such on this thing that Rafi told me I should have. And I was like, I don't need that. I don't have that many pliers. But it turns out to be really super handy. And then in here, what a mess. No. I've got ring mandrels and hammers, including my favorite texturing hammer. Look at how beautiful yeah. it is. And my favorite hammer of all time. Look at how old and also beautiful and rocks that I think I might have ideas for in the near future. And then I keep the rest of the rocks. This thing is probably older than me also, I reckon. Yeah, that's from, like, the jewelry store where I grew up. Yeah, lots of pearls. Look at these pearls. I haven't figured out what I'm doing with these pearls yet, but I bought some moonstone to go with them. Mm. That's nice. Maybe for the spring. Yeah, there's a name for it. It's a meteorite with basically peridot inside of it. Palisite, I believe, is what it's called. Isn't that the weirdest thing you've ever seen? Outer space rocks. And then here is my polishing station. This thing is little but it has the heart of a lion it's seriously amazing for doing the things and it throws dust everywhere so i got this dust collection hood and we ended up getting uh just the shop vac bucket top thing from home depot and hooking that up and adapting a hose basically to it that attaches back here and it sucks all the fibers, but also the metal dust. When you polish stuff, it takes a very small micro la layer of metal off. So it collects uh, gold and silver dust in there also, which if I wait like 10 years and take to the refinery, maybe it will be thousands of dollars. Who knows? Over here is the worst mess of all. And I have science going on over here. It's also kind of a catch-all. This is my... Uh, sheet metal roller, wire roller to flatten stuff, but I haven't quite uh, familiarized myself with this thing yet. I'm still figuring that out. And I have my ultrasonic up here where I can throw stuff in and clean it right quick. This super nifty anvil that was given to me by one of our awesome collectors. I don't know how old this thing is, but I think it predates me by like a lot. And then I keep my brass mallet and a mandrel and all of my stamping stuff back in here and my magic wand of course this here bench was a raffi invention also uh it's basically like the metal part was a like a computer desk that was not sturdy at all it also weighs like one billion pounds yeah. but it needs to because i hammer on it something fierce and it takes all the abuse so you could see all the drill holes that have been put in it. This is where I saw things. It's a good bench. It's a good Rafi invention. Pretty much the whole studio is a Rafi invention. Studio of the future. Ucher. 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 <laughs> Thank you for visiting and goodbye. <laughs> that's it. That's that's the tour for today. I, you know what? There is a, a bunch more, but uh, we've got to get back to getting ready. So don't forget... This Friday, Friday the 4th at 5 p.m., it starts at 5 p.m. Central, we'll be doing an open studio event, and we'll be doing that via Facebook Live, uh, but you could see all the information on our website, and we're doing a, a freaking awesome giveaway. We have like 10 things that we're giving away, including a $100 gift certificate for our website. So if you go to the link in the description, then you could go there and you could just fill out as many of the things as you want and possibly win uh, all of them. I, I don't think so, but you might win all of them. We'll be announcing the winners during the open studio event. And again, like I said, that is this Friday, Friday the 4th, December 4th at 5 p.m. Central is when it starts. That's it. Now I'm good to, we got work to do. So back to work. Back to work everybody. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you, especially if you watch this whole uh, long, impromptu, boring video of our studio. Yeah. And thank you. I adore you. And that's it. Say goodbye, Klee. Good day. Adios.